Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at graphing a rational function of the form quadratic over cubic. So, first I'll start off with factoring both numerator and denominator because I want to check for any possible removable asymptote. So, numerator factors into 2x minus 1x minus 2. And the denominator in complete factored form would be x plus 1, x minus 3, x plus 3. And since we're here, we're going to continue with the domain. Remember that the domain will be all the x values except for the ones that can make the denominator 0. So the denominator will be 0 if either factor is 0, which means that x plus 1 has to be different than 0. That tells us that x has to be different than negative 1. x minus 3 different than 0. Again, tells us that x has to be different than 3. And x plus 3 different than 0, which means that x has to be different than negative 3. And since we've just stated the restrictions, we will state the asymptotes in here because they're very uh, similar. So the asymptotes are represented by the equations x equals the restricted value. In our case, x equals negative 1, positive 3, and negative 3. And I'll record them on the chart since uh, I'm asked in this question, I'm asked to do this in this question, and I'm going to write here x equals negative 1, x equals 3, and x equals negative 3, and now the whole world knows that I've just found the asymptotes. Okay, so moving on to the horizontal asymptotes. Remember how we find the horizontal asymptotes in rational functions? We compare the numer degree of the numerator with the degree of denominator. When the degree of the numerator is lower than denominators, the horizontal asymptote is always at y equals 0. Okay, and I'll write an explanation in here just to, you know, um, rep repetition works sometimes to memorize and understand things better. So we're going to say the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And next, we'll continue on with the intercepts. So for the x-intercepts, remember we set y equal to 0. And remember that in rational functions, y equals 0 if the numerator equals 0. So we can either simply set the numerator equal to 0, or we can show full solution here and solve the rational equation by cross multiplication. So we can make both sides into fractions and then use cross multiplication to solve. I will make the numerator zero in this case and the numerator is already in factored form because we did this in the first step. And we'll say that the x-intercepts are at one over two and at positive two. So we'll record this as well x equals 1 half and x equals 2. Voila! Now, y-intercept, the fun intercept to find, <laughs> is found by making the x value equal to 0. So we simply evaluate y at 0. And again, it's very easy to find, not showing a lot of work, without showing a lot of work. So here we go. Every term that is attached to an x, doesn't matter what the power is, will turn into a 0 because 2 times 0, for example, will be 0. Any number times 0 equals 0. So the numerator will have just number 2. And in the denominator, look at this. So we have 0 plus 1, 0 minus 9. So that would be negative 9. So the y-intercept is 2 divided by negative 9 or negative 2 over 9. Doesn't really matter where we write the or where we add the minus sign. Uh, for the end behaviors, I prefer that I put all the information on the Cartesian plane before I describe the end behaviors. So I would start off with the asymptotes. We have three vertical asymptotes. The first one at x equals negative 1. We have another at x equals negative 3. And we have a third asymptote at x equals positive 3. And I will label the vertical asymptotes by the respective equations. x equals negative 3, negative 1, and positive 3. 
Next, I will find the horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 0. And I would label the asymptotes and add arrows on both ends. Next, I would plot the intercepts. I'll start off with the x-intercept. One is at a half and another one is at 2. We have a y-intercept at 2 over negative 9. And now I'm going to think of how to graph this function. Remember that to graph any rational function, we look into the domain of it. So the domain of rational functions is any real number, but the x values that where the asymptotes are. In other words, the asymptotes will divide the domain of this function into intervals. Having three asymptotes tells us that the domain is cut off into one, two, three, and then four intervals, which means that if we want to graph the function, we have to consider each domain separately. So we're going to start off with a domain x bigger than 3, okay? And for x values bigger than 3, the graph has to be on the right side of the asymptote, right, the vertical asymptote. And it will have two choices, either be above the horizontal asymptote or below the horizontal asymptote. And we'll find out by evaluating the function at any point in this interval. So I would pick the x value equal to 4 to evaluate the function. And at x equals 4, the y value would be 2 um, times 4 minus 1. It's easier to evaluate it from factor, the factor form. And then um, 4 minus 2 divided by um, uh, 4 plus 1. 4 minus 3, 4 plus 3. Obviously, you can do this quicker in the calculator. That's totally fine. So I sometimes I like to play with numbers and try to do that in my hand, so or manually. So we have 8 minus 1, that's a 7. 7 times 2, 14. And denominator is 5 times 1, 5. And then times 7, 35. So 14 over 35, that will give us uh, the reduced form. Uh, divide by 7 both, so that's 2 over 5, so 2 fifths. So that tells us that the graph will be above the horizontal asymptote. So at x equals 4, the value of the function will be 2 fifths. So again, it's sketching, so I will eyeball a number here, very close to horizontal axis. And remember that the graphs of rational functions are curves that follow their asymptotes. So here we go. I'm going to draw the first piece of the graph. So we're going to say that as x approaches infinity here, the y values will approach 0 from above. So I'll write this down. So x approaching infinity, y is approaching 0 from above. Another thing we see here is when x approaches the vertical asymptote at 3, right, from the right side of it. So as x approaches 3 from the right side of it, the y values will approach infinity because they're going all the way up. The next thing that we're going to look at is uh, the interval between the vertical asymptote at negative 1 and vertical asymptote at 3, so this set of x values. And as you can see in here, we have two x intercepts right on the horizontal asymptote. We have discussed this before, but I'll explain this one more time. Remember, horizontal asymptotes are formed when the y values stop changing as x approaches infinity. So only when x approaches infinity or negative infinity, the function has to be either above or below the horizontal asymptote. Now, in between the vertical asymptotes, the functions sometimes, so rational functions, may sometimes intersect their horizontal asymptotes. Now, the fact that this function will have 
y-intercept, x-intercept, and then another x-intercept in here. Remember, it must follow the vertical asymptotes, so the vertical asymptotes are never touched. It's only the horizontal that sometimes can be interrupted in between the vertical asymptotes, okay? Then the shape of the graph in this case will have to be y-intercept, connect with x-intercept, go above the x-axis and make a turn because the graph needs to hit another x-intercept and then it has to follow the vertical asymptote and the same thing should happen in this direction. Now this is one way of reasoning about the shape of the graph between negative 1 and 3. Another way would be simply by picking values of x as close to the vertical asymptotes as possible and then finding what the value of y is, which you can easily do by using a calculator. So you can pick the value of x at, for example, here we are at 2, so you can cho choose to use 2.5 and find the value of y. And we can also choose the value of x at negative 0.5, so at this point in here, and then find the value of y. And you will see that in both cases, we will get a negative number, which tells us for the y, right? Because, uh, and that will tell us that the graph will be below the horizontal asymptote. So this would be the next piece of the graph. And since I'm here, I'm going to describe the end behavior as well for this piece and we have x here approaching 3 from the left hand side y values approaching negative infinity x approaching negative 1 from the right hand side of negative 1 y approaches infinity negative infinity so next we'll look into the graph uh, between x equals negative 3 and negative 1. For this we don't have a lot of information, so what we are going to do is find the values of uh, uh, y close to the vertical asymptote from the left for x equals negative 1 and from the right side of negative 3. Now, I want you to pause for a second and think. Would you say that the graph here would be able to cross the horizontal asymptote? Remember that if the graph were able to cross the horizontal asymptote, we would have been able to find an x-intercept in this interval, and there is none of them. So that tells me that the graph will be either above the horizontal asymptote or below the horizontal asymptote, always following the vertical asymptote, never touching them. So in order to predict where exactly the graph will be, instead of picking numbers close to the vertical asymptotes, which can be awkward sometimes, because it has to be decimal numbers, and depending on the complexity of the equation, it can be a little bit of work. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to pick the value of x at negative 2 and evaluate the function at negative 2. So at x equals negative 2, we'll have the value of y equal to um, 2 times negative 2 uh, squared, or let's put it in here better. So 2 times negative 2 minus 1, negative 5. And then we have negative 2 minus 2, negative 4. And down here we have negative 2 plus 1, that's negative 1. Negative 2 minus 3, that's negative 5. And negative 2 plus 3, which is positive 1. That would be equal to, you can simplify the negative 5s in here, so negative 4 over negative 1, which is positive 4. So at x equals negative 2, the value of y would be Four, and then we're going to say that the graph has to be above the horizontal asymptotes and following the vertical asymptotes. And I would 
actually choose this to be a turning point because we are halfway this interval and that's where about the turning point should be. In calculus, you're going to learn how to find this with a lot more accuracy. We have uh, one more set of end behaviors in here. So x is approaching this time, negative 1 from the left hand side of it. And we'll see here that the values of y go to infinity and beyond. <laughs> and last, x approaching negative 3 from the right hand side of it. Right? So here we go. This is negative 3. This is the right hand side of negative 3. So that's negative 3 plus. The y values are going to infinity. And we're almost done. The last piece of the graph will be in the domain between negative infinity uh, to negative 3. So we'll give the function a value of negative 4. Why not? And at x equals negative 4, we'll have the value of y equal to so 2 times negative 4, negative 8 minus 1, negative 9. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. And down here we have negative 4 plus 1, negative 3. negative 4 minus 3, negative 7 and negative 4 plus 3, negative 1 so we have here 9 times 6, that's a 54 divided by negative 21 or we can simplify the 3 in here actually and a negative 6, so that would be 2 so that's negative 18 over positive 7. So this will be uh, between neg uh, negative 2 and negative 3. And we're going to say it's going to be somewhere in here. And that tells us that the graph must be below the horizontal asymptote and obviously to the left of the vertical asymptote. So the graph will go this way around. And uh, we're almost done here. I'm actually going to bring this um, further down. And uh, we'll be able to uh, place the end behaviors for x values approaching negative 3 from the left hand side will say y is approaching uh, negative infinity because as we approach negative 3 from the left hand side the y values are going all the way down and as x approaches negative infinity the y values are approaching 0 from below because as x values decrease, the y values or the graph continues to stay under the horizontal asymptote, so below zero. And this is it. I hope that uh, that gave you this uh, exercise, going over this exercise, gave you a little bit more confidence in drawing uh, uh, rational functions, the graphs of ra rational functions. And again, I would like to thank you for choosing to uh, learning from me and to listen to my videos. Uh, comment in the comment section if you have uh, any questions or if there is anything else that you would like me to explain. Thank you so much and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye for now.